Is the quantitative reasoning section in the UCAT only for people who are good at maths? Is it impossible to get a good score if you don't like maths? And how much maths do you actually have to know to be able to do this section? These are all valid questions and sometimes UCAT QR can feel really confusing, you're unsure what you need to know and maybe it's more maths than you realise that you have to know. But in this video we're going to be going over how much maths you actually have to know to be able to do well in the quantitative reasoning section and that it's not just maths you have to know, pairing it with good technique and speed can boost your QR scores. In this video I'm going to be showing you exactly how you can tackle quantitative reasoning sections no matter what your maths ability is. Hi I'm Loveline, I sat the UCAT last sub and I got a top decile score and QR initially was one of the sections I struggled with but once you realise that it's not just your maths ability that's being tested it's also your speed and, you, and your accuracy it will make this section so much more easier. I didn't do A-level maths and my knowledge was only up to GCSEs but I still did well in this section by learning the right technique which is exactly what we're going to be going through in this video. Also, make sure to sign up to my free newsletter with the link in the description below. As part of this newsletter, you'll get access to my free UCAT document, which has strategies on all the different question types, insights into the medicine application process, and just tips and advice for interviews, personal statement, and everything medicine related. In part one of two of this quantitative reasoning videos in the UCAT section, we're going to be going over what quantitative reasoning is, some of the different question types, and how you can improve your timing overall in this section. Let's start off by taking a look at what quantitative reasoning actually is. So the quantitative reasoning test is actually just looking at your mathematical reasoning and ability and that's essentially what it's testing and this is really important because these skills translate into medicine and dentistry. This is because you have to be able to analyse patient charts and information, be able to interpret different graphs like ECGs for example, being able to calculate drug dosages and medications for patients as well. All of these are really important so being able to do quick mental math, interpret this information, even interpreting statistics from research papers for example these are important skills and by understanding that this is what the UCAT is testing from you just makes it a little bit more easier to revise and have more motivation to do better in the section in this section you have 26 minutes to do 36 questions so that gives you around 43 seconds per question and you're tested up to a GCSE maths ability for all of these questions another important thing to mention with quantitative reasoning is that all these skills that we're going to be going over across the two videos they can actually come up within questions together so it's very possible to have percentages and ratios being tested in one question. In QR it's one of the sections where there's not clear different question types, a lot of the skills are overlapping and be, can be tested in more than one question in comparison to decision making which has six specific question types for example so that's important to bear in mind and with practice you'll be able to work with different skills a lot better and use mathematical reasoning a lot more easily. Let's start off by looking at one of the first and most important skills that you need to be able to do in quantitative reasoning and this is the idea of estimations. So an estimation is essentially where you're rounding the numbers that are in the question and estimating what the answer is going to be. So you're not using exact calculations. For example, if you had a question that said 102 times by 3.5, instead you would do 100 times by 4. You're just rounding these numbers to make your life easier. The reason that we use estimations is because it saves time, it means you can use mental math instead of having to use your calculator because as we know the UCAT calculator is very clunky and difficult to use so being able to do it mentally saves a lot of time. But it's important that you know when to use estimations. Only use estimations when your answer options are far apart from each other. For example, A could be 50, B could be 100, C could be 150, and so on. If your answer options are very close together, you do not want to be using estimations because then it will increase your chances of getting the question wrong. So one of the most important things is if you are deciding on using estimations, first read the question, look at your answer options. Are they far apart enough to use estimations? If they are not far apart, then you need to make sure you're working accurately to make sure that you're getting the right answer. The next key skill that you need to be able to work with in the UCAT QR section is percentages. Percentages are one of the most commonly tested question types and they often come up with a lot of the other skills that we'll be talking over across the two videos. With percentages the most important thing to learn is the idea of the multiplier method. So percentages can be represented as a decimal and this decimal is used in the multiplier method. So what I mean by this, 50% can be represented as 0.5 and that is essentially the multiplier. The reason that you need to be able to do this quickly and in your head is because then you can use the multiplier method. The multiplier method is essentially a standardized formula which is how you are going to be able to calculate your percentages. The formula is starting amount times by multiplier equals end amount. So whatever the starting number you're given in the question you'll be told to find the percentage of it, you will multiply that by the multiplier and then you will get your end amount. 
this equation is really important to be able to calculate percentages and then you need to also be able to rearrange it because sometimes you may have to find out what the starting amount is you may have to calculate what the multiplier is so essentially calculate what the percentage changes so being able to use this equation and rearrange it is really important and you can also use the triangle method the next key skill that you need to use in QR is the idea of proportions proportion is essentially the idea of how two different factors are related to each other for example if five apples cost two pound how many are three apples going to cost this is the idea of proportion as one factor increases the other has to increase by the same amount so proportions again are very common in the UCAT QR section and you also have to be able to use them as ratios and fractions so just becoming really comfortable with having to convert between these essentially proportions are saying that as one factor increases or decreases the other has to increase or decrease in the same amount so again always set your equations and calculations up in some sort of clear format using your UCAT white board in order to be able to do this calculation and work out what the multiplier between these factors are so you can do calculations a lot more easily. The next skill that you need to be able to use in QR is the idea of averages. Now the most important averages that you have to know are the mode, median and the mean. The mode is the number that is repeated most frequently in a data set. So if you're given a set of data, you just have to look at the number that's repeated most commonly and then that is your mode. If you are trying to work out what the median is, you have to order your data set from lowest to highest and the median is just the middle number. Finally, the mean. This is where you add up all your data values and divide them by the number of values you have. So let's say you had the numbers 5, 10 and 3. You would add all of those up together and then divide it by 3 because you had 3 numbers. It's also really important to be able to calculate the weighted mean and the equation for this is where you do the individual value times by the weight and then you add this up for all of the different factors that are contributing to it and again this is an important formula to know as you have to be able to calculate this in the QR section. One of the hardest question types that you can get in the QR section are tax questions. When you are in timed conditions or in the actual exam when you're doing tax questions these are the questions where you guess, flag and come back to. This is because of how time consuming they are it's not really possible to do them within the 43 seconds. So again, if you are faced with a tax question, guess it, move on, and when you can come back to it later, dedicate a bit more time to work it out. So the idea of tax questions is essentially as part of the question you'll be told someone's salary and you have to work out how much they're being taxed on and all these different factors and similar question types. So the way tax works is that tax is broken down into different tax brackets. So for example if you earn £50,000 on the first £12,500 for example you may not be taxed at all. For the next 12000 to 20000 you may be taxed 20% and then between 20000 and 50000 you may be taxed 30%. So essentially you're income is split into these different brackets and the percentage of tax for each bracket is calculated. So this is how you work out tax questions. In this video we've gone over what quantitative reasoning is and have gone over some of the most important skills that you can be tested on. So for more like this make sure to check out part two where we go over the rest of the skills that are needed in the quantitative reasoning section of the UCAT. And also make sure to check out my other YouTube videos as I have similar ones on all the other sections of the UCAT. And again don't forget to sign up to my newsletter the link is below in the description. Description.